The two types of alerts we're going to cover. First will be a change-based alert, which is when a record has been added, changed, deleted, or otherwise meets a condition under which you've specified. These are often described as event-based alerts. The second type of alert that we're going to cover is one you probably aren't familiar with, and they're called date-based alerts. They're configured to notify you when a specific date, time, or interval has elapsed from when you created the alert. These can be described as a, an alarm clock set to ring at a specific date or time, or a snooze button set to alert you after a certain period of time has elapsed. So we'll go over examples of both of these cases shortly. Now these can be configured on any Dynamics 365 screen or virtually all of them. While I'll show you two specific scenarios that are very focused examples, you can use, and you'll see this as I show you, uh, you can use this functionality almost anywhere uh, so it's a very broad capability that you'll have. And just as a bonus material, if uh, the dynamic screen itself doesn't offer an alert, we'll show you how to create an alert directly from the table browser itself. So that's a, a pretty comprehensive overall approach. So with that said, let's do a demonstration now of creating an alert. Now I'm going to start with a re released product list page here. You'll notice the grid page has all of the, in, in this example, Contosa products set up. I can create a custom alert from the options menu on my screen. So I'm going to, from there, create a custom alert. Pop-up is going to come up in just a second that will allow me to configure the conditions under which I want to be notified. It'll also allow me to configure how I wish to be notified. Okay, with the pop-up there, you'll see I've defaulted the table that I'm accessing, in this case, released product records. Depending on the screen you're on and the type of alert you're creating, you may find that there are additional tables available to you within that screen that you can configure. So I'm going to stick with a release product record. By default, it's configured to look at all fields and to simply tell me whenever a record's been created. Now, that may be a perfectly fine alert if you want to know every time a part number's been created. But the specific example I'm going to go over is how to configure a specific condition. So I don't want to notify, I don't want to be notified if any part has been added and get overwhelmed with all that information. I'm going to go through a scenario where I'm a buyer and I want to be notified if a product has been created or changed with a blank value in the buyer group field. So you'll notice I've changed it from all fields to the buyer group, the one specific field I'm interested in. By default, it's now gone from been created to has changed. So this would notify me if somebody has changed the buyer group, but I wanna be notified if there's a specific condition that's met. If it is set to, and in this example, nothing. So if a part has been created with a blank buyer group field, I'll be notified. I'm going to test it by taking an existing part and accidentally deleting the buyer group field so that you'll basically see that it's changed into that condition. Now, once I've set the conditions, I can determine how long I want to be notified. In this example, I'm going to set the alert to never expire, or I can say, you know, end after a certain number of days or something. I can also at the bottom determine how I wish to be notified. If I have email configured within Dynamics, I can tell it to send an email to me or to somebody else. I can type in a different email address there. I can assign it to a different user if I want to be notify somebody else like my manager or my delegate. So in this case, I'm going to leave off the email. I want to be notified in system and I'll show you where the alert, the little bell on your menu will ding when this condition has been met and I have a message waiting for me. So with that, I'm going to fire off the alert. Now, I haven't done anything to cause that condition to occur yet. So I'm going to take an existing product. I'm going to bring up the release product record. I'm going to go into the buyer group field. And let's first assign a buyer group to it. So you can see it's got a buyer group on it now. Now I'm going to change the part by eliminating that buyer group. Now, the alerts don't go off instantly. You'll need to talk to your system administrator, and there is a batch process that runs that monitors for whether or not an alert condition has been met, and if so, it executes whatever the notification is on that alert. Your IT folks will want to run that on some kind of recurring basis, probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. Depends on how frequently you need it run. 
In this demonstration example, we've configured the system to notify me every 60 seconds if an alert has been run. Now, that's probably overkill in a production environment that will allow the demo to go more smoothly. Now, even during that 60 seconds, I'm going to, rather than wait for it, I'm going to go over and start the second example, which is a date-based scenario. Now, in this example, I've got a purchase order record that has uh, a due date and I've confirmed it to the vendor. I'm recording this on November 6th, 2023, and you'll see that the due date is set for four days out into the future. There's a little ding, by the way, of the, the notification on the uh, buyer group going off. So I'll pull that up in just a moment. We'll see what that alert looks like. So while I'm on this purchase order, I have I want to be notified not just when a purchase order has been added or changed or something like that, but I'm going to go through a scenario where this is a very important purchase order that I need to monitor and I want to proactively check on the delivery before the delivery has uh, shown up. And I don't want to wait until, you know, run a report every day of show me purchase orders that are past due or show me purchase orders due in the next three days or something. This one order is unique and I want to be personally notified on it. So the scenario I'm going to set up will be to change that I want to be proactively reminded ahead of the due date. Again, on the menu, I'm going to go to Options, Create Custom Alert, and that's going to bring the pop-up on here for me to configure the conditions. Similar, I've got uh, the tables access available to me there. I don't want to look at all fields. I want to focus on one specific field based on my due date. If the requested receipt date now, because I've chosen a date field, the event that I can subscribe to or configure in the notification, you'll see is a very different set of options. I can be notified if it's changed, if it's been postponed, like if somebody has pushed out the delivery date for me, uh, if it's due, like I can be notified on the 10th when the record is due. In this case, I want to be proactive. I want to be notified ahead of. So I'm going to choose the is due in option, and that's enabled a different drop down right below it. How early or how far in advance do I want to be notified? One day. In this example, I'm going to go two days so that I can proactively contact the vendor, get a tracking number, make sure that the two day freight or whatever the expected delivery has arrived. So I will be notified now. The earlier example was a broad subscription across all released products. As I've currently configured this, this will notify me when any purchase order is approaching its due date. That's not specifically what I want. That's going to be an overwhelming amount of information. I want to only configure it for this special purchase order. So that's my second option, a single record. And you'll notice the purchase order number is referenced in the alert, which is the purchase order number displayed on my screen from which I'm creating it. So this alert is only applicable to this purchase order and will notify me when the due date has approached within two days. I'm going to set this alert to never expire and to notify me again in system. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and that will subscribe or create that alert. Now, that alert was configured to notify me in two days ahead of the delivery date. Rather than make you wait two days for this demonstration to play out, I'm going to go ahead and advance the due date to two days from today. That will trigger the condition. So let's go ahead and edit this line. That should create the condition under which that due date uh, or that alert is uh, triggered. So now I'm going to go ahead. Oh, actually, I'll do it on the header too. I wasn't sure off the top of my, oh, that did change the header. We're good there. So now I'm going to, uh, while we're waiting on that one minute cycle to occur, let's go back and look at the alert for the previous record, the released product record. You'll see that the alert has that generic header or subject that was on there. And if I want to expose the details, it gives me the part number, description of it, and the hyperlink takes me to the release product screen. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't bring up that specific record. It just takes me to the grid where I would find it. Now, while I was showing you that, you'll see that I got another alert allowing, uh, notifying me that the purchase order date has been changed or not changed, that it is now approaching. It is due in two calendar days. And if I expose the details, it gives me the order number, vendor, and that related information. So that's proactively telling me before the order is due, giving me the information I wanted to have. 
Now I mentioned a third option. If you're on just about any dynamic screen, you should see this options and create custom alert. But if you don't have that options for some reason, or you can't find the table within the alert that you need to subscribe to, and a good example would be a purchase order receipts. If I go to the receipt record, it gives me headers for the really for the receipt number. But if I want to look at anything related to the line, like the part number or the due date of the line or the lot number, serial, whatever, I'm not going to be able to do an alert on there. I can only subscribe to an information on the receipt header record itself. So I've got a table browser. This is a free add-in browser-based utility, uh, configurable and supported through Dynamics. Uh, from there, my table browser menu also has options, create custom alert. And that brings up the table browser that I'm on and I have the same capability. I can look to specific fields. I can do the created, deleted, changed, configure my alert, tell me how I want to be notified, and I will effectively be subscribing to the data table itself as opposed to trying to do it through a dynamic screen.